no change except that we don't have the square root anymore. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far, especially the x squared. Yes? Oh my gosh. What do we do now? This should be exciting. Oh, this is exciting. This is a good day for you guys to be in class. I mean, you don't want to miss Thursdays anyway because it's the best day of the week. But this day, oh, I'm putting stuff together now. Do you see it? It's a diamond problem. Why? 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 Why is it a diamond? Someone explain that. Someone else explain that. You have to set it to zero. Why do we have to set it equal to zero? It's squared. Squared. Okay, that was four people who knew that. That's fantastic. Did you all see that as well? We got an x squared. You can't solve that by any normal means. It's not like this problem, right? Where we just add a number and divide. It's not like that because we have an x squared up there. Notice how if you would have forgotten the x squared, it wouldn't be a diamond problem. You'd be subtracting the smaller variable. You'd be something completely different. We're actually going to get two answers on this thing. Or we should we have the potential for getting two answers on this thing. Whenever you saw the x squared, this is way back even before this class. Uh, this was a review for you, like section C, the appendix C that we did. This means that you're going to get everything to one side, you're going to get zero on the other side, and you're going to factor this. That's what the x squared says to do. Now, should we be moving the 4x squared to the left or the 9x and the 2 to the right? To the right. Yeah, we want to keep that positive, that way we can factor it. So that means we'll have to subtract 9x. We'll get negative 2 equals 4x squared minus 9x. Notice they're not like terms, I just have to just line them up horizontally. Is that good enough? Mm -hmm. yep. No, the last thing I gotta do is yeah, I gotta do that as well. So zero equals four x squared minus nine x plus two. Now that should look familiar because we've done that a whole lot in this class. This is where kind of where we really started the actual math process for us. We factored. That's what we factored. How are you gonna factor that thing? Sure, what did, we, what did we call that? Diamond. We're going to do a diamond. Three terms, diamond problem. I want you to set the diamond problem, see if you can still do it. Uh. <laughs> Remember what I said about spiraling information? If you lose this stuff, you're not going to be successful. You can't lose the stuff. Math is kind of a growing thing. Right? It's like a tree. I'm inventing this analogy as I go. Let's see. So factoring is your roots. The stuff we learn is the trunk. And when you're successful, you get little leaves. Right? <laughs> you can't get leaves if you lose your roots. That was actually pretty good. Top of my head right there, huh? You like that? The leaves of knowledge. Oh, I could go all day with this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you didn't forget how to factor. My goodness, that was a key concept. I said, if you can't factor in this class, you will not pass this class. I wasn't lying. Right? If you can't factor, you will not pass. Uh, here, if we do this problem, we're going to get negative 9, and you're going to get 8. Where am I getting 8 from? 4 times 2. 4 times 2. Very good. And we're going to find out what two numbers add to this one and multiply to this one. I'm going to go kind of quickly through these things, because you're supposed to know how to do it already. We're going to get negative 8. And we're going to get negative 1. Those two things add to negative 9. They multiply to positive 8. This says, because I have a number up front, it's not a simple x minus 8, x minus 1. It's the extra step problem. It's a little more advanced than that. This says I can break this thing up and get 4x squared minus 8x minus 1x. I'm going to put the 1 there just so you see where that number is coming from. And then plus, eight, uh, plus 2. 4x squared, we split our middle term, we have the plus 2 at the very end, and then we factor by grouping. When you factor by grouping, of course, we're going to get 4x, x minus 2. That's factored from here. This says there's really nothing much you can factor out besides a negative 1. Why a negative 1? Well, that's a minus. That says you have to factor out a negative. The only thing they have in common is 1. So I write my minus 1. I get x, not plus 2, but minus 2. Do you see where the minus 2 is coming from, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you do. I'm factoring out a negative. If this is confusing to you, you really, really I'm not even kidding here, you need to go back today and review chapter C, the, the appendix there. You, you have to. You've got to review factoring. If, the, if you're losing it right here and you're like, what's he doing? I have no idea what this is. No, you should, because that was the first week of school that we did that.
Okay, factoring by grouping says when you have the same exact thing twice, you can factor it out. I'm going to move up here for you so you can actually, uh, you know, I have one more factor. We could write x minus 2. That's our common factor. We write the remaining stuff 4x minus 1, and that's factored. Now, after you have it factored, are you done? No, you have to set each one equal to zero and then solve it. What's that called on the right hand side of the room when we set each one equal to zero? Why is that? Why do we get to do that? We do. That's why we do it. What lets us do it? Okay. Yeah, it's got, it's called a zero product. some zero rule. The zero product property. Very good. Zero product property it says that if you have two things that are multiplied together that equal zero, you set each one of, of them equal to zero. So, I'll make a little section over here. We get to set x minus two equal to zero. That's the first one. We also get to set four x minus one equal to zero. By the way, we absolutely have to have a zero for that to work. Any other number, then going to happen. If we add two here, we're going to get x equals two. So far, so good? Yeah. If we add one and divide by four, Would you imagine you feel okay with that? How about okay with the factory? Now, honest with me, how many people kind of uh, were iffy on the factory? Okay, that's all right. That's all right. But you need to go back and look at it. If you knew you're iffy on the factory, go back tonight and look at the factory. You with me on that? Because otherwise, I mean, honestly, this is easy. Adding 2x and squaring both sides, that's easy. It's really, really easy. Uh, but then doing this part, that's the tough part, and that's old stuff for us. Brenda. Yep, this one goes on top, these two go on the bottom. You add to the top, you multiply to the bottom. Go review that tonight on that video, okay? Was the diamond, was that in chapter 9? Chapter 7. Seven. Actually, no, it's before chapter 7. So it's still in the appendix? It's in the appendix. Okay. C.4. If you are having trouble on factory, C.4 is for you. <laughs> <laughs> and C.1 where you did the equations. The equations are C.1, C.4 was just factoring this stuff. It's a good lesson, guys. I mean, go, but I, I watch them all the time just to kind of feel good about my. No, I'm just kidding. Are we going to have that, those examples with different roots on our homework? Now, one thing you do have to do, you've got to check your answers because occasionally when you do this process, you eliminate something that. That it's kind of weird, weird on these things. Uh, you make negatives positives. You see that? When you square something, you make negatives positives. So occasionally, you're going to get an answer that really doesn't work. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to happen on this example. Uh, it doesn't. But occasionally, you'll plug one in, and you'll get a negative inside of a square root. Is that okay to get? Okay, so you got to check both answers. Here, you check two. You're going to get 18 minus 2. That's 16. That's 4 minus 2 times 2 is 4. That's 0. That's okay. That works. The 1 quarter... You get, oh my gosh, it's hard to check, but you can do it. You get one fourth, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, nine fourths, that's greater than two. So when you subtract two, you get one fourth. Square root of that is one half. Minus two times one fourth, that's also one half, you would still get zero. But you need to check it. You do. Because if you get a negative inside the square root, that's a bad thing. That would be a complex number, you can't deal with that. This occasionally will make up some, root, some uh, solutions that are not actually true. You follow? So you've got to check your work. You've got to check your solutions. I'm going to have you do one on your own, very similar to this, and see if we can work our way through it.
No board. So first thing you must do, of course, isolate your root. So do that first. Get that root all the way by itself. After that, use the appropriate power to get rid of the root and then solve it. If you get an x squared, you know you're going to factor. If you don't get an x squared, well, no problem. You can solve that one pretty easily. In this one, did you get an x squared? Yes. Okay. I see a lot of good work on people getting all the way down to the factoring. You know what that tells me? It tells me that you understand the concept. It's the factoring that's the thing that might hold you back here, right? It's not the problem. I mean, the, the problem is okay. You all got down to, to where you're supposed to factor. Let's just make sure that we, we drive this home, make sure we know how to factor. That way, that part doesn't hold us back. So on our problem here, uh, the first step is to square both sides. True or false? First step is to square both sides. True or false? Definitely false. We're going to add 4x to both sides. The reason why is because, well, we really can't do much unless our square root or whatever root we have is isolated. 3x minus, I'm sorry, 3 minus 2x equals 4x. Did you make it that far? Yes. Good deal. Next thing is understanding that we could, we're going to have to square both sides in this problem. We use a square because we have a square root. If we had a different type of root, we would use a different power. So in our case right now, we've got a square root. We're going to square this side. And we're going to square the 4, the x, or both. What do you think? Yeah, because really, we're squaring this whole side. So you needed to get 3 minus 2x equals not 4x squared, but 16x squared. Raise your hand if you got that far. That's good. That really right there is the end of the